Well, joining us now to discuss uh, how the royal family's latest recruits, Catherine and Meghan, are getting on is 21st century royal historian and author, Tessa Dunlop. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you. I know, just looking at that clip, the, the interesting thing about Kate is, I mean, she's a lump younger than me, well over a decade, I think, but I can't really remember a period without Kate Middleton in my life. I agree. And that's how long she was kind of groomed for this job for. They met at university. They were sweethearts. I mean, how many couples ten, do you know in real life? Who, ten years, darling. She ten was, years? Ten years before she there got married. Are. So she had a good run in. She'd been to Windsor Castle. She'd been, to, you know, to all the palaces. So she kind of knew Practice. the lifestyle, I think, over ten years, what she was going into, whereas... Our recent one, Megan, I don't know, did she quite know what she was taking on? But I think that was deliberate in many respects. You know, William had seen the pressure that his mother was put under. And I think there is this awareness with this all-consuming 24-7 media mm. that it's a massive role. And so over 10 years, I mean, they even had that little breakup. Do you remember? And she was sort of commended for being discreet in that period. And she didn't go and blurt her she, book. She, she zipped it. Indeed. Yeah. And I think that was flying colours. On you go, down the aisle, love. But, <laughs> but, but, and I think then Harry, he's older. You know, he'd had a, a couple of... Um, crash runs with, with former girlfriends. As you say, he's not being fast-tracked to become king. So there has been this more loose, you know, I was going to say promiscuous there. That sounds like my grandmother, but, you know, he we, we, live outside we, the We tracks. won't talk about that. No, but he, he was allowed to kind of go for it a bit more. And therefore, uh, um, he, he meets a woman who's mature, who's uh, accomplished in her own right. Who was already married and had been Indeed. through the whole show of it all. And crucially, who's American. And... I think Kate, she's born in the royal county of Berkshire, all her life probably dressing up in her playgroup. She dreamt of becoming a little English princess married to William. Whereas Meghan, she doesn't necessarily buy into our royal bunkum quite as, I mean, I'm going to call it that, you know. Maybe she doesn't believe in it in quite the same way Kate did, you know. And we see that feistiness in her, the challenge, you know, not going always with the dress code, you know, sometimes stepping in front of those who may consider her to be perhaps a step back still. You know, and I think that's what's interesting about Meghan. She has thrown down the gauntlet, and I think sometimes she doesn't even realise she's done it because she hasn't been sitting through her entire childhood reading Ladybird books about Lady Diana. And so I don't think so. You mean, so instead of being wanting to be... To yes. be a, 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 she wanted to be a star rather than a royal. Indeed, and she yeah. simply fell in love with a redhead. Some of us do, <laughs> you know? <laughs> and I think that's what's so unusual about this. It's actually a union based on undistilled love. It's love. I do have Absolutely. to ask you guys a question because there's so many reports, especially in the States, of how Meghan is not handling all the scrutiny mm -hmm. and all of these reports mm -hmm. um, well. And everyone's mm -hmm. like, well, she was an actress. But, you know, from, from my experience with Meghan, this, she wasn't an actress. When she was on Blue Blood, she was never walking the red carpet. She was never her personal life. Nobody ever even knew she was married and divorced until she met Harry. Mm -hmm. She really wasn't a celebrity, so to speak, that was mm -hmm. always in the spotlight in the United States. So now everyone's expecting her to really be ready and prepared to handle all of this criticism here at the UK yeah. and it, I don't think anybody can really be prepared for that. She I've, was I think much more of a princess in her American life than she is now <laughs> whereas she is just one of many within the farm. Well it's interesting I've covered uh, Duchess Meghan's career before she joined the royal family but also since joining the royal family I've been on all their engagements I've been on t tours with them. Look at and you. I've, well I, I think but it's interesting when you have that frontline view you really get to see that actually to her the work is the most important mm -hmm. thing she has taken it so seriously she has not put a foot wrong when it comes to how she's really performed as a working member of the she's, royal family. She's done a foot wrong with my books. What? I mean, if you're thinking, I know it's not all about frocks, but it doesn't help when her wedding gown is by Givenchy, when she wears Dior. I mean, if you think of Diana, she supported the British fashion just all the way through her reign. I but know it's not about time, frocks. Oh, we dear. have the no. Smart Set collection that Meghan launched that was championing British high street fashion, mm -hmm. and it very much brought it at a time when British she's high street fashion okay. is suffering. We won't argue about this, David. but she's been married into the royal family. She should step up and represent Britain around the world. Arguably, 
she's helping our new relationship with Europe yeah. by going for these Harry and Meghan are very much designers. positioned as Commonwealth youth ambassadors and ambassadors mm -hmm. of the Commonwealth. Their roles have been entrusted to yes, them but by the Queen. You know, Queen. every magazine, every woman's magazine around the world, you'd know better than that because you're a New Yorker, that they scrutinise everything she wears, her hats, her gloves, her shoes. You know. It's well, I don't think, I mean, but also scrutiny comes around Kate Middleton's outfits mm. as well. I think yeah, there's always going to be somebody yeah, that doesn't agree darling, with But dress. she's wearing British, darling. She's not silly. She's doing exactly the right thing. Oh, David, I think you sound parochial. Oh. I mean, I'm sorry. The royal's job is global. We can't yeah, yeah. closet Meghan up and say only use British designers. I mean, she'll come out looking like an old stuffy with a headscarf any minute. <laughs> Excuse me? Well, I'm just saying, I think, actually, if you look back through history, we have demanded, and right back, you go to the wonderful, I mean, not wonderful, it was cruel as hell, but the Tsars, you know, and their ex golden clad court in, in Russia and anywhere you went, you know. Uh, this was about getting the best in the world. Mm -hmm. You weren't confined by borders. All the marriages were dynastic. I mean, we talk about poor Meghan leaving America and coming to, the, you know, to coming to live in Britain. If you think <laughs> about princesses back in the day, they'd never even kissed their suitor. Mm -hmm. They normally didn't speak the same language as him, and off they went on a sort of four-day. They did not have trip. a date at the Soho farmhouse. No. that's for sure. <laughs> Indeed, they didn't. But I love how this conversation. I mean, to me, this is a perfect example of how you know a British and an American viewpoint and. Mm -hmm standpoint on Megan it's very different. so much. Yeah. I think in the US she's really been championed since Absolutely. day one. Absolutely, and I love that. One of the Americans standing she's... in Britain's oldest institution, the House of Windsor, and doing a good job. And I love that she's representing American and Canadian designers because, you know, her, her their child is half American. <laughs> There's a fascinating look at that in a new documentary. On David True... is giving me, giving and me death stares around. I'm going to give you the Princess Margaret look, honey. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Well, there's a fascinating look at uh, Megan's US support in a brand new documentary on true royalty. Meghan for president takes a look at whether Meghan could one day become president. In the United States, the media, we're actually celebrating uh, her as the Duchess. The UK media, they've been hard on her. I mean, honestly, they actually dubbed her Duchess Difficult. DD, you know, like a rapper. I don't read anything. Yeah. Uh, it's <laughs> much safer that way. She's royal now, and she's American, and she's biracial. I have a feeling that no matter what she does, it's going to be scrutinized. I think the British, the Brits, the English people give her a hard time because she's an American. And a part of me also, you know, She's rocking the boat, and not everybody likes to have the boat rock. You know, there have been reports that she can't hold a nanny. She's had, like, three nannies. And then, you know, they say that she gets up at 5 a.m. If there's a list at 5 a.m., this is how she gets things done. No, she has things to do and things to accomplish, and it's on a timeline. It may not be your timeline, but it's a timeline that needs to be worked on and, and done, and she knows what she's doing. If you're not doing your job and you're not taking this woman seriously as the Duchess or you're disrespecting her because she is American, goodbye. Sorry, next, thank you next, right? <laughs> Great ladies. <laughs> a, lo a lot of support from the US. I mean, we saw this week Hillary Clinton in London on a book promo tour, but also supporting Meghan, saying that she just wants to give her a hug, yeah. that she's really had a tough time by the tabloids here. We actually heard that Hillary even visited the Sussexes at Frogmore Cottage in Windsor. Okay. She got to meet baby Archie. So how is her press in, in, in New York, in America? Did she get good, good press? Glowing. If you I look mean, at us weekly, yeah. absolutely. Magazine. If you look at all of the entertainment and lifestyle uh, publications, as well as even news publications, I think Americans are yes, very supportive of her. I'm and not they sure. Do you think she gets bad press, David? Oh, I think we've treated it's Megan undeniable. appallingly. I find it fascinating as a Brit, given that. We are at the moment in something of a constitutional crisis. I mean, most people have heard of Brexit somewhere in the world. I think it's extraordinary that, that we are treating Meghan so badly. Really? I mean, arguably, she's one of our only assets at the moment. She's proof that our um, oldest institution can be multicultural, biracial, cross continents. And there we are lampooning her in the press when arguably, what did she do? She got on a private jet and at the same time as Harry said, there's a climate crisis. You know, arguably, the, the two things are totally separate. One I is do, about her privacy and safety and the other is about a genuine climate crisis. I do have to ask you what your thoughts on this. I mean, there are yeah. several reports. Actually, no, I'm sorry, confirmation that Harry, Meghan and baby Archie will be spending the holidays in the United States of America. Mm. So how do you guys feel about that? I mean, 
bringing, of course, a, a, a little prince out of the country, out of, the, out of Britain well, for his good, first Christmas. It's good, it's good PR for America, of course. David, I would say so that charming. the lack of support over here may be why they want to spend more time sure. in the US, as well as her that. being yeah. of dual yeah, nationality and wanting to raise but, but, a kid but, with US but and they UK also talk background. that they might even settle, uh, have a home in America that they were talking about. We're talking about that. I know they yeah. also made a comment about possibly having, you know, settling down in Africa somewhere, because of course that is a special place for them as a couple. But, you know, I think it is special that Meghan really hasn't forgotten her roots and, and wants her own mother I, I to think, know her but, son. But let's also remember, when Catherine married, right, she had fabulous press the first year, then suddenly she got slated. Why so they all, that? but I think the British press generally do that. They pump them up, wait for the big occasion and the wedding and everything, and then suddenly, you know, you've had enough now. So they do you, knock you do down. You know, when I call it tall poppy syndrome, in this country, and the Americans don't have it in the same way, we can't bear people getting what we perceive to be too big for their boots, and we then hammer them, and at our own expense, just quickly, on our history with American incomers. Of course, Edward VIII abdicated because he married a twice married. I think she was getting going through a second divorce at the time, Wallace Simpson, this is in the 30s. Mm. But I um, wrote a book with all these 100-year-old women who remembered when our future king was about to get married to this woman. And the anger, how dare she? This woman, they said, coming in from America. This is within living memory. Edna was 150, she just died this year. She sat there, puffed up in her armchair in the 21st century, still remembering this anger about an incomer. And I think that there is this kind of weird proprietorial sense certain people who take the royal family very seriously in Britain have, mm -hmm. a kind of ownership. And this idea that an incomer has to earn their place in the family. And I think we're seeing a bit of that. And it makes uncomfortable viewing when ultimately, Megan's just a girl in love yeah. and a new mom. You know, let's cut some slack. What new mom isn't a bit tearful and but that's But that's what the British press did, didn't they? They compared it to Wallace Simpson. Yes. She was American. She was divorced several times, as was Megan. I think the British once, tabloids have always looked times. for... I, I thought it was two. Megan's only been divorced once. Oh, okay. them, yes. The British tabloids have always looked for something to sort of pick on yes. with Megan. Yeah. I think she's had it really difficult. Uh, people like to say that the Queen doesn't approve of their behaviour. Mm. Well, they put that record straight this week when they announced that they were going to be spending Christmas with uh, Megan's mother, Doria Ragland. And they, they mentioned in that statement that the Queen did give her full blessing to that. Because, of course, we've seen the Cambridges in the sure. past take time off in 2012, 2014, 2016 to spend their own Christmases yeah. with the Middletons. The but double standard. The what's interesting about... The only thing yeah. I'd say about that, which I think is quite sad, but they decide, fine, they go to visit her mother, but, you know, the age the Duke of Edinburgh is and the age the Queen is, you, you don't know. It could be the Duke's last... Oh, but you, you could be saying that for years. Oh, yeah. are you renting a house in the States? Because there day. were reports, actually, that they may be renting a house in America around the States. Well, it's interesting. Yeah. I've had conversations with the palace about this, and, you know, the palace are very open about the fact that the couple will be spending some time in the UK and the US, really between next week and the end of the year. Harry's wrapping up his last engagement this Sunday, and from what sources are saying, they will have a rented property on the West Coast mm. at some point between now and the end of the year, but for private time, yeah. to be away from the tabloids sure. who are attacking them. So My feeling is that people talk about whether they should renege and leave the royal family, step down, you know, and I just think that would look terrible for Britain. Fair play to them if they want to free themselves of the shekels of, of royal duty, but I think we need to just treat her First and foremost, remembering she's a human being. I agree. She's just trying to do Thank her best. Thank you so best. much, Tessa. And I'm going to take away from this from my trip to London. Do not marry a prince. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's pretty much what I've learned today. You never know. Especially not a British you one. <laughs> not an American. <laughs> well, thank you so much for all the guests being with us today. It's pleasure. been a pleasure chatting with pleasure. you about the royals. Jen, lovely as always.